Hey guys, we are on day 105 in our Bible reading plan, and today we're going to take a break from the book of 1 Samuel, and we are going to read several psalms written by King David. Now, we're going to read Psalm 7, 27, 31, 34, and 52. And we have to remember as we're reading these things, David still hasn't come into his kingdom. Saul is pursuing him. He's trying to kill him. David's life is in danger. And we've just read in the reading on day 104 that David spares Saul's life when he has a chance to take him out and end this whole thing. But instead, David spares him. So we get this sense as we're reading these Psalms of of where David's heart was. It's easy to read through the account and, and hear the play by play and not really connect with it. But when you read the Psalms and you realize the difficulty that David was facing, the wretchedness of his soul, it just makes it so real for us today. So Psalm 7 starts out, he says, I come to you for protection, Lord. He says, if I've done anything wrong, show me, you know, show me my heart. God is my shield. He is an honest judge. And then he ends with, praise of the Lord. And so there's this sense that David is trusting in God completely. And even in this difficulty, this dark time, he's self-reflective. He's saying, Lord, search my heart. If I've done something wrong, show me. And also, get rid of my enemies, protect me, go before me. And then he knows, he looks to praise at the end in the middle of this very dark time in his life. Psalm 27, he's still declaring, the Lord is my light and my salvation and my fortress. I will not fear. It's as if David knows like, if I can just abide in him, he will care for me. And he looks forward to the day that he will once again praise the Lord. It's so interesting that each time he he professes this deep anguish of the soul, he ends with praising God. And Psalm 31 is no different. He starts out, he says, protect me. Don't let me be disgraced. Rescue me from my enemies. He makes this declaration about trusting in the Lord. In verse 9, he says, have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in distress. He declares that he will trust the Lord, and yet his heart is deeply grieved. He says, my body and my soul are withering away. I am dying from grief. Then in verse 14 of Psalm 34, he says, but I am trusting you, O God. My future is in your hands. And he ends again that psalm with praise. And Psalm 34 says, I will praise the Lord at all times. Verse 4, it says, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. And David is acknowledging God working in the middle of all of these things that he prayed and God came to his aid. He prayed and the Lord answered him. He praises God for the deliverance he's been given and he turns and he encourages everyone else. If you remain righteous in troubling times, the Lord hears you. He will be with you. He will go before you. He will rescue you. He will protect the righteous. He will do that. And Psalm 52 is this beautiful declaration that God's justice will come to those who are wicked and unrighteous. And I say beautiful declaration because when you read it, you get the sense of why David was able to spare the life of a man who has been relentlessly pursuing his life. Because David trusts God. David trusts God to fight the battle for him. David trusts God that God will bring justice in this earth and that it's not his place to do so. It's the Lord that will do it. And I think that that is so important for us today when we come into conflict conflict with one another, and perhaps we're not as angry as Saul is, but we all do have conflict and we all do have trouble in this world. And to be reminded that the Lord is the one who brings justice, the battle belongs to Him. We don't have to strive. We don't have to fight. We don't have to go to arms. God is doing that for us. He is fighting on our behalf. He goes before us and makes a way for us. He does all of these things. David knew it. David trusted in Him. And at those critical key moments to how his kingdom is going to be established. David doesn't take matters into his own hands. Instead, he trusts the Lord to do it. And so I'm encouraged today that in our deepest grief, in our withering away of our soul and our spirit, we can trust that God is working. We can trust that God will deliver us. We can trust that God sees us and understands the pain that we're in and is working on our behalf. We don't have to fight for our right to be heard. We don't 
don't have to fight for our right to be justified. God will do that for us. We just keep trusting him and reminding ourselves as David does over and over again throughout the Psalms that he is our God. He is our protector. He is our mighty fortress. He is our savior. He is our deliverer. He will do it. I hope that encourages you today. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on this, on these Psalms and what God is speaking to you as you're reading through them. And I hope you have a great day. God bless.